you know what? I just want to start off by saying I am the furthest thing from what people nowadays would call a player fan. I actually hate that term. I hate it. Because to me, being a player fan is being a casual fan. You're not really a fan of the team. You're not really, you're barely a fan of the sport. And you don't know anything about your team. I can't stand that term. But in the, you know, with, with me, I was born and raised to be a Pittsburgh sports fan. I rep the Steelers. I rep the Penguins. Even though I wasn't raised a Penguins fan, I became a Penguins fan on my own. But I was brought in with the Pirates and the Steelers. And I rep the logo. I want what's best for the teams. But in this instance, I 100% side with the player in this instance. This is Steel Sermon. It is Friday morning with another video. Back. Just getting off the, the final steam that I have with this absolute joke of an organization that is the Pittsburgh Pirates. And do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Links are posted in the box down below. It really is sad. It is an absolute disgrace what this franchise has become since 1992. It really has. This ownership, because there, there is just no way that a franchise can be this bad for this long unless it's ownership. And that's exactly the case with the Pirates. Bob Nutting has established a non-competitive atmosphere and it's spreading to the front office. This was year three of Ben Charrington being GM of the Pittsburgh Pirates. In all three years, the Pirates have finished last place, including back-to-back 100-loss -back seasons. Oh, but we get the first overall pick in the draft. What good does that do? Because number one, getting the first overall pick in the draft, that's just a nice way of saying that your team is hot horse crap. Plain and simple. And I'll get to the other reason in a little bit of why I'm not a fan of, well, at least we got the number one overall pick in the draft. I can't stand it when, fan, when fans say that. I can't stand it. Who the hell sits down and openly roots for their team to lose? Because as awful as the Pirates are, as awful as this franchise is, I'll never sit down here and root for them to lose. I will never cheer for them to lose. I will never root for them to tank. Will not happen. But I'm sick and tired of this product that they put on the field every single year. Day after day, week after week, year after year, decade after decade. I'm tired of it. So the ongoing... Uh, Dumpster fire of an offseason with the Pirates just continues. And uh, it, it kind of seems like with how the Steelers are supposedly rumored to get off to a good start for the calendar year of 2023, the Pirates are just doing the complete opposite. For one thing, that, that clown Derek Shelton is still the manager of the team. You know, the guy who set a Pirates franchise record. Yeah, in the 135-year history of this franchise, Derek Shelton did something that no other Pirates manager has ever done before, and that's lose a hundred or more in consecutive seasons. Good job. But now, with these acquisitions, and with how they're handling the farm, it's, it's just really ticking me off. And I'm trying so hard not to to yell in this video. I can't really tell you to lower your headphones because I don't know if I'm going to yell in this video because this freaking franchise isn't worth my energy. Brian Reynolds is the guy who I'm siding with in this video. Three teams are in the front runners, are in the, uh, are the favorites to make an offer for this guy because he requested a trade. The New York Yankees the Los Angeles Dodgers, and the Seattle Mariners. Those are the three teams that are favored to make a move with him. You know what 
all three of them teams have in common, they all made the playoffs last year, this past season. They all made the playoffs, and they're all contenders. You get the point. Brian Reynolds wants to play for a contender. Brian Reynolds wants to play for a, a team that will actually supplement him. Not with this dumpster fire over in western Pennsylvania. Not with them. And do you want and do you know why Brian Reynolds wants out of Pittsburgh? It's because the very same reason that those three teams are offering him for, they will supplement him. The Yankees, they got uh, they got power with their bats out the wazoo over in the Bronx. The Dodgers, I mean, they have a cheat code lineup over there in LA. And the Mariners, they got a rising young stud in Julio Rodriguez over in Seattle, and they made the playoffs for the first time in 21 years back in October. You see the th- you see the uh, the trend? They all have something to offer with him. This team don't. Because here's the thing. If you are going to build around this guy who you offered a two-year extension for before the season even began back in April, you have to commit to it. And with these acquisitions or lack thereof that we've made this offseason, bring in a washed-up has-been in Carlos Santana who hasn't been relevant in about six years back when he was still with the then Cleveland Indians, who was pretty much just a fill-in guy up in Seattle and they don't want him no more. You bring in Vince Velazquez, a disastrous stat sheet for him, and he's one of the rare instances where his stats justify how he is on the field. But that's not all. You bring in Jarlin Garcia from the from the San Francisco Giants, who has a 361 ERA, which doesn't sound all that horrible, but you want to know why he had a 1-4 record? It's simple. Because no one on the freaking Giants can hit. Over here in Pittsburgh, no one on the Pirates can hit. This guy is going to go out there in the rotation, the bullpen, whatever the hell you're going to use him for, he's going to think to himself the very same thing that every other pitcher on this team is thinking to themselves. I can't make one mistake. I can't throw one bad pitch. If some goofball in the outfield or the infield makes an error, I'm going to lose because I'm not going to get any run support. That's not good. But you mean to tell me, Ben Sherrington... You mean to tell me that you think the solution to all this team's problems is signing Rich Hill, a 43-year-old pitcher, the oldest player in the MLB, the second highest paid player on this team is a guy who is almost old enough to be my father. You are so out of touch, sir. You are delusional. I I see this from a mile away. You really think that that signing another washed up old man veteran is going to solve all this team's problems. It's going to solve everything that's wrong with the rotation. It's going to solve everything that's wrong with the back end and the bullpen. You are so out of it, man. And the worst thing about it is they're treating this season like it's just, you know, another punt year, like it's no big deal for Brian Reynolds because they don't think it's that big of a deal that he wants to spend just one more year on a team that has no, that has no business being competitive. You want to know how you make a guy like Brian Reynolds stay? You bring up the kids from Altoona. How about we see Nick Gonzalez? The guy's been raking down in the minors and we've never seen him play. Travis Swaggerty, for the four millionth time I've mentioned his name. He's been with the club five years now and he still has not shown his face in the city of Pittsburgh. 
Why isn't he brought up? O'Neill Cruz. All things considered, O'Neill Cruz turned some heads this past season. But everyone's saying that he's going to be a bust for us because this guy, Derek Shelton, is still, ch is still telling him, hey, chase the breaking balls. Hey, lay off the fastballs. Take an 0-2 count. Is that what a competing team does? You want to inject life in the team. You want to supplement Brian Reynolds. You don't do that by bring by bringing in guys who stink. You don't do that by bringing in guys who 31 out of 32 teams, or a, I'm sorry, 29 out of 30 teams in the league wouldn't even touch. You don't do that by bringing in guys who, who have no business being in the majors. You do it by calling up the farm. This guy, Ben Charrington, is a complete contradiction of himself. For years, all three years he's been GM of this franchise, he's been preaching about the farm. He's been preaching about 2023 is the year. Really? 2023 is the year, Ben? Hmm. I'm looking at the date on my calendar right now. And it's December 30th, 2022. Guess what tomorrow is, Ben? Tomorrow is New Year's Eve! And you have the nerve. You have the nerve to say 2023 is the, is the year that this team's just going to figure it out? That this team's going to start being competitive again? That don't matter unless you're building on what you have. And you are about to lose everything because you failed in your promise to build up Brian Reynolds, a guy that we snagged from San Francisco with the Andrew McCutcheon trade. You failed in your process. Just like Neil Huntington did with Jason Bay and Xavier Nady. Back when Dave Littlefield did with guys like Chris Benson, like Jason Schmidt, like Brian Giles, like Jason Kendall. The list goes on and on and on and on about the absolute failures that this front office has done over the course of the last 30 years. And it all started with Barry Bonds, love him or hate him. It all started with Barry Bonds being opted for a free agent and along with Derek Drabeck in the offseason in 93. And now you've backed yourself into a situation that you need to tiptoe your way out of, and that is trade valuable assets for prospects that I know damn well that you're going to bury into the Allegheny River Reservoir along with the other ones. That's why I can't stand it. That's the thing that pisses me off the absolute most about this franchise. It's always business. It's always money. It's always everything else before winning. And the fan base has absolutely had it. Look at franchises like the Baltimore Orioles. They weren't projected to do anything this past season. And they won 80 plus games. And they were in the playoff hunt for quite a while. Look at what the Houston Astros did back in the early 2010s. They tanked, but you bring in a smart GM, you bring in a guy who understands today's philosophy with the farm system, and the Houston Astros are the defending World Series champions. They won two World Series in the past five years. Look at what the uh, New York Mets did. They have the highest payroll in baseball right now, and they have a lot of talent on that team that they can build around. Look at what the Atlanta Braves did. They tanked for a couple years, and now they're one of the premier teams in baseball. Kind of taking it back to the 90s with them. They have so much richness in their farm, and they will be competitive for years. Look at what the Seattle Mariners did. Look at what the Toronto Blue Jays did. Look at what the Chicago White Sox did when they're a fully healthy team. Look at what they're doing. Look at what the San Diego Padres did. It is disgraceful 
It is absolutely disgraceful. It's always business, business, business. This guy, Bob Nutting, I hate him. And I hate Ben Sherrington too. And that's why I've given up on this rebuild. Stop lecturing me about the farm. Stop lecturing me about the drafts. Because we all know at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Because we're not going to use the prospects. So I'm just sitting here waiting until about, oh, let's say 2027 when Henry Davis finally gets called up. I mean, after all, Travis Swaggerty was drafted in 2018 and he's probably not going to get called up until 2024. So I can expect a nice six-year wait for, uh, for Henry Davis to be called up as well. You know, just... Uh, and for whoever we decide to take with the uh, with the first pick, I absolutely hate what this franchise has become. I absolutely hate it. I'm tired of seeing other teams just continue to get better. Yeah, they all go through. Yeah, I mean they all go through a little bit of a low, but you know what? They all get better. Meanwhile, the Pirates, bottom of the barrel, laughing stock of the league, nobody respects us. How long will it take for this team to be competitive again? How long do we have to wait? How much worse can it get? How much longer will it take before teams start respecting us again? And I'm not talking about Cubs and Cardinals. I don't give a crap if the Cubs and Cardinals don't respect us. I don't care about them. I'm talking about other teams in baseball. When are we going to stop being a bump in the road, a, a, just a speed bump for other teams in the road, and teams actually look at us on the schedule and be like, oh, wow, we got to play the Pirates coming up. That's going to be a really tough series. Because teams look at us on the schedule and they laugh. They go like, oh, <laughs> we play the Pirates. This is a team that can't even touch first base when they hit a home run. This is a team that can't even touch first base when they're in a pickle between first and home. Oh, this is a team that has players that have their cell phones out on the field. This is a team, you know, that, that always yanks the pitchers when they're throwing no hitters. I hate what this franchise has become. I hate Bob Nutting, I hate Ben Charrington, and I hate this rebuild. I have seen no progress with it. None at all. None. And it's going to stay that way. Lose Brian Reynolds. I dare you. Lose Brian Reynolds. Have him sit out for the year. I dare you. Because that's the direction he's taking because you won't help him. And another team will. And that's all I got to say. With that being said, have a happy new year, everybody. This is Steel Sermon, checking on out for the night. May God be with you all.